hoping Jacob at that point in time would like to turn over the time to anyone else that would like to bear their testimonies. Jacob. Okay, you would think after talking to strangers for two years that I wouldn't be scared, but that's okay. So my mission, um, 729 days, two missions, three mission presidents, five areas, 10 companions, countless bashes, spiritual experiences, um, and memories were made. Um, everybody always talks about how their mission is their the best two years. And I can say that, that, that my mission was the best two years um, of my life so far. And I am excited to continue to have that be my, the foundation um, as I continue to follow the example of Jesus Christ and live the gospel. Um, so today, I want to share with you some experiences that strengthen my testimony um, for my mission. And to start off, I served in the Bible Belt, and that is definitely a real thing. Um, we would just walk down the street and people would throw scriptures at us um, or whatever it was, but it was really fun. Um, and I'm super grateful that I got to serve and learn so much more about the Bible as well. Um, I learned that God is aware of us. I know that he is 100% aware of what we're going through, um, who we are, um, and he knows what we need to do and who we need to become. become. Um, when I got my call letter and read Alabama, Birmingham, I wasn't very excited. It wasn't one of those places I was dreaming of going to or whatever, um, but I very quickly became to love it. And I got there um, and just the culture, everything is green, there's trees everywhere. Um, it was just awesome. And everybody loves Jesus and it's really cool. Um, <laughs> So in my first area, we, me and my companion, we were both new to the area, um, but my companion had served in that area before. Um, and the very first day we went out and started attracting, we were knocking on doors. I got to talk to somebody through their ring doorbell, but they were on vacation and so they didn't want the gospel yet. Um, but as we were talking to different people, there was, we got to talking to this one lady and she was just talking to us about God. Um, and then a dog walked up to us and we didn't, we just thought it was her dog. Turns out it wasn't her dog. Um, and my companion was like, oh, I think I might know whose dog this was. So we gave that, that person a call. They were a member, a part member family. Um, and we we're just like, hi, how are you? And they were like, not good, our dog's gone. Um, and we're like, well, we found your dog. And they said, oh my goodness, okay, well, we'll be like right back because they were outside like looking for him and so we went to their house and they um like the missionaries in the past they didn't have a very good relationship with them but we found their dog and they loved us for that um so we got to teach them and we were teaching um sister vaughn is her name and she wasn't a member yet but we got to start teaching her and she loved the gospel and she got baptized um, and so that was so super cool just to see the Lord's hand from the very first day. Um, and then moving on seven weeks in, I got emergency transferred because some other missionary broke his arm when he crashed on his bike. And so I took his place, um, and moved into Florence, Alabama, which was in a different stake. And we knew that that stake was going to get moved into the Arkansas Little Rock mission in a couple transfers. Um, and none of us in that stake, all the missionaries were like, didn't really want to move because it was a different mission. We were are used to, already used to one. Um, but eventually we did get transferred. And so I went into the Arkansas Little Rock mission. And once again, I wasn't very thrilled um, to have to change my mission or whatever. But I grew to love Arkansas just as much as I loved Alabama. Um, fast forward a long time, um, lots of bike riding and bashes and you name it. Um, I went to a different area called Mountain View. It had mountains, um, but it was in the middle of nowhere and it was the folk capital of the world. Um, 
And so I went there and then we just started teaching people as well. Um, and then I got moved to another area called Conway, Arkansas. And they there was just when COVID started. And so it was time for another new thing. We had to figure out how to do missionary work um, when we didn't go outside. We had to use Facebook and it was really difficult just to have to figure out what to do when people didn't want to respond to us. Um, but we were busy still. We got to teach a lot of people on Zoom um, and we just did our best. And um, one of my companions there, he was a really good example to me. He was just like, well, we just need to have faith that God will provide. Um, and I was just I don't know. It had been over a year since I got to baptize anyone um, that I taught. And so that was really hard for me. But um, as we continued to do everything we knew to do, then we got a referral. And this lady um, had gone to the Come Unto Christ website. She saw an ad as she was watching a YouTube video. Um, and so we called her and asked her why she wanted to learn more or whatever. And she told us, um, how she had been baptized four times um, and how she just had been searching for the truth. She kept getting baptized because she felt like she found um, what she was looking for, but she still felt like there was something missing. Um, and so as she watched the ad, then she felt something. Um, so we started to teach her on Zoom every single day and introduced the Book of Mormon to her. Um, and within a week, she told us how she couldn't put the Book of Mormon down. She loved it so much and that she knew that the, the church was true um, and that this is what she needed to do. Um, and when she told us that, that was like such a spiritual experience for me, just to see how somebody could change and understand and feel the spirit so much um, within just a short time. And even over Zoom. Um, like we didn't ever meet her in person. Um, and so we kept teaching her, we invited her to be baptized and she accepted. Um, and so the next day after we invited her, she, we had another lesson with her and she told us, well, um, I've been talking with my mom also, and she wants to get baptized too. And we were shocked. We we're like, how does your mom even know what's happening or whatever? Um, but turned out she had called her mom after we would get done and she would teach her everything that um, she learned from us and her mom wants to be baptized too. And so it was super cool. Um, we got to baptize her and her mom together just two weeks later. And then in the same month, we continued to teach um, her daughter and her daughter got baptized. Um, and we also got to teach another part member family and baptize a little girl all in the same month. And so for me, I realized that blessings are delayed. They aren't immediate. Um, but as we push through the hard days, as we push through no, nobody responding, um, that God would provide a way, even if it meant getting a referral um, or whatever. It wasn't us reaching out to her first, but her responding to us um, saying she wanted to learn more. And so that was super, super awesome. Um, and just a testimony of builder for me. Um, so I wanted to read a scripture. It's in DNC 18, 15 through 16. And it says, and if it so be that you, you should labor all your days in crying repentance unto this people and bring, save it be one soul unto me, how great shall be your joy with him in the kingdom of my father. And now if your joy, it will be great with one soul that you have brought unto me into the kingdom of my father. How great will it be your joy if you should bring more many souls unto me. Um, and ultimately that one soul is us. It's up to us to become converted to the Lord um, and to save our soul, to be able to live with him in the kingdom. Um, and so I know that as I became converted and as I helped other people become converted, that that scripture is true. Um, there, there's so much joy in just helping others experience the blessings of the gospel. Um, and it was all worth it. I'd go through all the hard days, all the riding my bike in humidity, um, all of it just for, just to share those special experiences with them. Um, and then the last area I was in, it was, it was a different 
assignment, um, I was called to be one of the social media specialists in my mission. And so what we did was we were kind of the behind the scenes of the Facebook pages um, for the mission. And we got to see how like different videos would do like results and the insights from them. Um, but it was really cool for me to see just how one video can reach thousands of people. Um, and you don't know how many people are being touched by that, but the chances are a lot better than just you knocking doors and you get to meet, I don't know, 10 people a day versus sharing a video um, and get to have a thousands be able to see it. Um, and so I know that the Lord continues to move forward, that God knows what he's doing um, and that the work will continue to go forward no matter what, even if it is a pandemic. Um, and ultimately I learned some very valuable lessons from my mission. Um, God is so loving. He sacrificed his son for us so that we can all repent and be better so that we can be able to ultimately live with him again. Um, and I'm so grateful for Jesus Christ's example as well that he was willing to, to die for us um, so that we could have those opportunities. The second thing um, I would say I learned is joy. I mean, normally I'm always a really happy person, um, but in Preach My Gospel, the first presidency promises that the Lord will reward and richly bless you as you humbly and prayerfully serve him. More happiness awaits you than you have ever experienced as you labor among his children. And I know that that, that, that is completely true. Um, I was and I am super happy um, that I got to serve my mission and just help people um, with service or with the gospel and teaching them. Um, I never really thought it would be so fun just to go talk to strangers and ask them if they needed help mowing their lawn or whatever. Um, but it, it's the joy is greater than any of the sorrow that I felt. Um, it makes all the hard days worth it. Just when you have a good contact, um, you get to have a, a spiritual experience and that uh, makes every day a good day. And I know that this gospel is it's awesome um, that we get to have this gospel in our own lives. Um, and I know that this church is true, that has the fullness of the gospel, um, that the Book of Mormon and the Bible, they go hand in hand and that they work together um, to help us feel the spirit and to come closer to Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father. Um, and I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, before he sits down, we'd like to present him his plaque and congratulate him on uh, serving the mission. Thank you.